Hello, world. What's up? We're uh, here again, once again, weekly at the uh, Sessions with Sarge. And today I'm luckily joined by Oregon native Gus Warbington. How are you doing, brother? I'm chilling, dude. Posted up at the farm right now. Nice. You already know. Yeah. Well, yeah, basically kind of almost every one of these, I sort of start out the same way. I always uh, want to hear everybody's quarantine story, like what it all, how it all boiled down for you and, you know, where you're at, how you're living and uh, just some of those like kind of basics. So totally. Yeah. I was pretty much, I was in Salt Lake. I spent like most of the season in Salt Lake, Portland, and then kind of in like early March when news was getting super crazy and things were changing really fast and it was uncertain and i think i bailed i bailed from salt lake and drove to oregon like pretty much just last minute like decided to just throw all my shit together and just hit the road and now i've been posted up in oregon at my parents farm for like three months now almost nice it's been pretty insane yeah and it seems like time has kind of flown by we've just been super busy they got a bunch of animals and they live on a farm so it's just like never a dull moment just been taking care of the case. yeah i mean you can go seven days a week like eight hours a day there no problem getting all like you know f- getting all the animals fed and making exactly. sure that all the zones are dialed and prepped up and then then you guys have that huge garden too which goes off yeah yeah and that's kind of been our food scene which has been unreal that was another thing that like that's immediately cool. crossed my mind when i was in salt lake and i was like stressing about stores and just how that was like right when the toilet paper rush was like going on and I was just like this sucks shopping here like yeah just thinking like how self-sufficient my parents farm is like they have so much they have their garden and we have so much food and my dad gets a bunch of food from clients like we've been eating all this fancy like wagyu beef my dad's a veterinarian and he goes oh. and visits this wagyu beef zones we've been eating like insane steaks and like We've been just like, oh, man, those are the know. best, man. That's Dude, amazing. Yeah, yeah, like literally like hundred dollar steaks, and my dad gets like gifted sometimes for just going out there and doing work. So cool. Yeah, I think for that reason, I was like, for the food reason alone, I was just like, Dude, it's gonna be so nice. <laughs> just yeah, like, and just like when you're locked down, just to be with family and stuff too. You know, it's awesome. Sure. Like you don't have yeah, to worry just, about which people are like. You know, sometimes when you're with your crew, maybe. You know, some people have been mixing it up with tons of people and you don't know, you know, who's chopping it up with who. So it's like nice to like have it be real confined, you know? Yeah, it's like it's like a super sane quarantine. Like I'm staying away from everybody, but I still am able to like hang out with my parents and talk to people every day. And like I'm not losing my mind and not super isolated, which is good. But yeah, can avoid the virus for the most part. That's huge. That's so that's so nice. And then. So I've, uh, I always kind of like ask questions to just people like followers and stuff of 686 and myself. So I have some really good, like, you know, funny questions that, that I got over. You actually got more than anybody from other people. So first off, I want to, I want to hit, I want to hit these questions because I do want to do a tour of the farm. We're going to get a little quick look at the farm and I've got quite a few. So first yeah, off yeah. at Tucker Andrews, Tucker Andrews, uh-huh. our boy, he says, who is your favorite rider? Question mark. <laughs> Whoa, he's hitting me with the heavy right off the bat. Yeah, he's got the big yeah. one coming your way. So I know he wants me to say him, and he's definitely up there. But... <laughs> <laughs> Damn, dude. I probably got to go A-Rob. Shout out Aaron Robinson. Sick. Favorite oh, man, that's a, that's, yeah. a, that's a great one. Biggest dance buff for me. Um. And then um, at Conway Castles wants to know how did the G Don challenge come about? Like, how did you kind of invent that move? Dude, well, first thing I'm glad that <laughs> came up because I definitely don't want to claim that. I, that <laughs> anybody, anybody who knows it knows that it was in like it was. There's a shot in Subject Hawkinson where Terry is like riding on his toes and I think that was the first time I saw it and like I'd seen Alo do it around Bachelor quite a bit and it's kind of a crazy story I like did this one trick in like 2000 it was oh yeah it was on New Year's Eve in 2016 it was literally the last day of 2016 I like 
on this box feature, right, in Tumalo, right by my house, I, like, jumped out of my bindings, jumped up to the top of the board, did, like, the thing, came down, did that trick, and it was kind of, like, posted it on Instagram, and it was kind of whatever, like, it didn't spark, like, a crazy hashtag. I didn't, like, hashtag a G-Don Challenge or anything, and then my homie and fellow Bachelor Shredder, Jared Elston, like, posted a video of him doing it, like, kind of right after that, and he just hashtag g Don challenge of him like riding down the run and just like i guess because of the trick that i had done and and then that video went like super viral and the hashtag like went crazy and then it was like a thing that's yeah, hilarious it's like yeah i was definitely hyped and it was like so you didn't really have like much to do with it other than you threw down the trick one time like just in your little local zone and then yeah, it just totally. took off because yeah that everyone took it and ran with it, huh? Exactly, yeah. And I kind of wanted to just be like, yeah, I, I definitely do not claim that it's my trick because, like, mad people have done it before and after. It was just, like, somehow my name got tagged in there, but I'll take it. That's amazing. Awesome. Well, yeah. so we're just – we're rolling through all the questions. I want to get to a lot of these because there, there's some good ones. We got at Jeff Please. Keenan. We all know Jeff, Jeff Keenan. He says, how many animals are on the farm and which one is your favorite? That's another so, tough one. Heavy question. Uh, <laughs> I wish I had an answer to that. There's You're going to have to be more right? like the three to four hundred. Yeah. I mean, the sheep alone, like, I can't even say. It's, my dad actually always says it's like he always keeps it a secret how many animals he has on the farm because he thinks it. He says it's like asking how much money somebody has. People are always like, how much sheep do you have? He's like, well, that's just like. That's not your business. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I don't know. We got a ton. Definitely in the double digits. And I would say, I mean, probably my favorite. It's our dog, June. But right now I'm chilling with um, this little goose we got. His name's Ryan Gosling. <laughs> nice. No, no joke. That's his actual name. Get it? Because he's a gosling. Awesome. And he's just posted up. Yeah, he's kind of my homie right now. He's been my little quarantine bro. Oh, that's <laughs> huge. He might be my favorite. We also got a baby horse who's definitely up there. Nice. Epic. I remember there was one, like, when I came and stayed out on the farm, there was, like, one sheep who had a special, like, bell on his, on his oh, like, yeah. thing. Bucket. What's that? Bucket, bucket dude. Bucket, yeah. So, yeah. like, Bucket kind of stood out for me. He's a legend, yeah. And, you know, it's crazy. Yeah, he we had him, and he was bottle-fed, which is pretty rare. Or it's not, like, super rare, but pretty much happens every now and then where the mom, like, won't let him nurse and so we bottle feed them and they become like super personable and like friendly towards people so we usually we don't name any of them because there's like a million out there so yeah we just put a bell on this one so you could remember who it was and like this is bucket this is the only sheep that we have named and what's crazy is he just had a baby bucket did and the baby has this crazy like spot on its neck that is like there's no other sh i've never seen in all our years of being on the farm a sheep with like a crazy huge birthmark like that no way it, really, it came from the only sheep that we knew and named and made like we would have recognized out of any of them that was bucket's little baby so there's definitely something special going on with bucket so is that gonna be bucket jr or yeah we've been calling him basket uh, <laughs> nice dude. yeah that's just like that is tight. So then I'm just going to hit one last one last question from the viewers since like you got so many. I'll leave a few of them undone. But Blaze, Blaze Kotzenberg, shout out to Blaze. He, he was just wondering, this is a super simple question. Dude, when are you coming back to SLC? It sounds like everybody's missing you out there. So. Dude. Blaze asked me that every single day. <laughs> nice. He probably already knows the answer to this, but I actually, probably pretty soon, I've been posted up here for a while, and I'm kind of like slowly, I actually kind of slowly started thinking about packing yesterday, but it's become, since I've been posted up for so long, it's going to be like a multi-day job to get packed up, to go back to Salt Lake. So, I don't know, I stuck around. My brother's birthday was two days ago. I was sticking around for that. We had like a sick day. Went I saw that. that. Yeah, which is open right now, which is unreal. Dude, that's like, so cool. Yeah, I want to. I want you to talk about that for a second. So they're doing kind of a social distancing thing. It seems like you like only a, only a certain amount of like seasons pass holders are allowed up. You got to like 
register or the night before or whatever. I was kind of yeah, like following it's, up. It's a crazy process. It's totally, it feels so surreal. It's like just uncharted territory, but yeah, it's sick. They just like hooked up their season pass owners because they traditionally stay open until Memorial weekend, which is like obviously way longer than most resorts. And so, yeah, and they closed down in like March. So all the pass holders were definitely bummed. Not that they're, was like not that they shouldn't have closed down they pretty much had to but yeah anyway it's like 500 it's limited to 500 pass holders a day for and it was open i think like 10 days total i think it's uh going on for like two more days but crazy. anyway yeah they just like opened up a couple chairlifts and you do this crazy lottery where you like go online and at 6 p.m exactly you have to like refresh the page and just like try to get in any way you can like it was so chaotic me and my brother tried to do it and like he got in and i didn't and it was like first birthday and i was just like oh shit like have fun up there i guess like it's kind of ruthless but Dude, yeah, you don't have any of the local like you know you can't pull a locals card and hit one of the marketing guys up what's up yeah i mean it, <laughs> luckily we were able to sneak in so i didn't have to come to that but i don't know it's definitely for like it's for the pass holders and the people who've just like, you know, we're on the team. And so they, they like pay full price to get their passes and everything. They like yeah. definitely deserve these days more Sick. than we do probably. But That's yeah, cool. we snuck in there and it did. It's so fun. It's just like, it is what it is. They definitely, there's a lot of crazy rules. They got to like keep everybody just, they're doing a super good job keeping it careful. So like, cool. it's a different experience, but dude, it just felt surreal. And I was thinking like, we're got to be some of the only people in like, the world maybe that we're snowboarding the other yeah day, like, riding the riding chairlifts anyway like having a normal ish day on the mountain like shredding with homies from a distance it was like dude this is like, so sick that is so amazing man yeah. that's cool was i was wondering what about are you do you have any mount hood tendencies like anything pulling you to maybe hit that up or are you just gonna get to salt lake and and um it's it's been on my mind to go up to hood. I talked to Austin Smith the other day. He was up there shredding and he said it was actually really fun. Sick. But yeah, I'm not sure if I'll make it up there or not. I kind of want to get back to the homies and SLC. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Missing the squad for sure. Yeah. I wanted to delve into that just to real quickly too. That's one of my other topics was like, how was it? Was this your second full season in Salt Lake city or? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was my second, and it was my first season really, like, riding Brighton, actually, a ton, because mm -hmm. the two seasons ago, I was living in based out of Utah, but we were filming the snowboarder video, everybody, everybody, and we just traveled, like, a ton filming for that, like, went to Japan, and went to Canada a bunch of times, and just, like, we were kind of always on the road, so it, I didn't actually spend that much time in Brighton, like, early season or anything, but this year... I posted up at Brighton for like all of January and it was powder literally every single day. So like it kind of, I got a whole appreciation for just like resort riding in Utah. And just yeah, dude, you were getting, you were, you were definitely one of my all-stars of the early part of the year. I was frothing pretty hard on watching all the stuff <laughs> you were up to. And like we were getting a Man. slow start yeah, up in the Northwest. The yeah. Right. Yeah. I felt I was like, yeah, and it was a bad in the Northwest. It wasn't good at bachelor early season. So I was just like, I'm so glad I'm in Utah right now. It was seriously like almost in perfect pow day, like every day of January. Like we only had a few down days. Like it was the hardest shredding I've had like every day in a while. We just had a sick crew. I was like riding with Blake Paul a bunch and Sam Paxwood and like Lays and sick. Whole just Utah gang, sick. Griffin a bunch and Griffin Seabird. And we just like, Dude, it was just all time. I love early season resort shredding. Like before everybody was really off on filming trips or anything. It's just like everyone's starting the year off riding the resort and it just happened to be like all time. So it just, it just got better and better every day. Like, that was always like, that's always been my favorite, one of my favorite times of the year for sure. Because I love those preseason days like at Baker too. when like, I love it when everybody's still super loose and everyone's getting bucked off everything and like, <laughs> And, like, people are getting played, like, and that just adds, like, a fun element to the day, you know? Yeah, for sure, yeah. And just adding power to that is, like, I also, that's kind of a reason I haven't been, like, tripping or frothing, like, quite as hard to shred, like, late season as a lot of people is because, like, I honestly feel like I got a full season's worth of shredding in, like, early season because we just went ham. And I rode, like, more power last year than I did the year before, for sure, and I had a full 
full season, you know, no yeah. or anything. And like, that's even sick. with it getting cut off, I was like, I'm not going to lie. I'm like pretty satisfied with the amount of boarding we got this season. Like, that's amazing. You could always like definitely bump to not be able to do the whole spring shred thing and all the events and stuff, obviously. And like, we had to cancel QP camp out, which would be going on like now, mm-hmm. which is my brother's event up at Bachelor. And that was yep. like, definitely a bummer to have to do that. But it was obviously the right call. Like didn't want to be crowding people into yurts and doing all the like sketchy stuff that we normally, everything no. that we camp out was like not going to work right now. Totally. Yeah. What's up with it? And then what's up with the shorts and shades? Is that something that can, that probably got kind of cut off too, huh? Yeah. Yeah. We pretty much are basically like shorts and shades still happens every year and it's usually on or before this it happens every year and it's usually on like closing weekend and we just like session and go crazy but we i haven't been making videos for it for the last like three years we did 10 years and that was like enough we felt yeah. like we were just caught and that, i think the 10th one was like two or three years ago now and now we just like shred no camera and there's still a ton of people with shorts and everything and it still goes off but but yeah this year it's not happening because bachelor is going to be closed like with this whole lottery system, it's like impossible basically. And it's also been cold, which is another thing right now. It's like yeah. freezing outside. But it was snowing the other day when we were shredding, which felt surreal. And I was like thinking in the back of my head, like, I'm pretty glad I'm not in shorts right now. Yeah. Like, <laughs> nice. Yeah. But yeah, it's not going to happen this year, sadly. But I don't know. There's been some, there's been some loose talk of maybe trying to get a little top secret thing going, but you know, mom's the word on that. Okay, perfect. Yeah, let's keep that on the DL. Yeah. Well, um, let's. Should we? Should we get a little bit of tour it? Tour it yeah. in. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll keep it short. I yeah. was gonna tell. I was gonna tell you this funny story while you walk out there. That in yeah. ni- 1994, I did my first ever snowboard contest at Mount Bachelor. It was called the Enter the Dragon series. And oh, uh, dude, I. Grew up doing those. Yeah, dude. So my dad brought me down there, and I remember I was like in this like little group, and Louis Fountain was competing, and he just like absolutely smoked me. But like I just like that like little trip when I was fourteen years old got me pretty fired up. I think it was like one of the things that led me down like the path of wanting to be a snowboarder. So big props to Bachelor for. Yeah, old school. We all did Enter the Dragons with like our squad was like Ben Ferg and like yep. Russell Smith and those guys were in like the older divisions and like it was like heavy when I look at those lines now. Like those contests were legit. Oh, that when I was in that one back then in in '94, like I know Josh Dirksen was there, I think, and like yeah, yeah it was pretty. Every and those guys were. We're just killing it. I'll never forget watching Louis Fountain like ride at that. Like that was like, damn. Yeah. One day I want to catch flight. The king, yeah. <laughs> Louis he's a, he's one of my all time faves. Also, to be honest. Yeah, he's. he's... All right, we got okay. We got little Ryan Gosling's coming outside. Ryan Gosling, he's he's joined our group here on our live with Sarge. Hi, Ryan Gosling. How are you doing? Yeah, he's kind of he's kind of leading the tour right now. Nice. We kind of just follow where he goes, but I'll um yeah we got peacocks right here. Whoops, I gotta flip my camera. Let's get a flippage going. Oh whoa, there, yeah, beautiful, man. beautiful. It's a nice sunny day. Peacocks, Gosling still in the mix. Yeah, Gosling still in the mix. I'll keep half an eye on him. He's a little reckless. Couple more sheep. I mean peacocks. <laughs> Couple more though. Here are my parents out with the horses right now. They're chilling. Hello. Hey, say hello. Say hello. This is our uh, baby horse, Onyx. I was just born, like, let's see. He was born, I was he born two weeks ago? A week ago? Yeah, just a little baby. Check oh, out. wow. That's cool. She's amazing. She's a little crazy right now, kind of filled with you, energy. You got to break in the horse, huh? Yeah, exactly. We're keeping keeping an eye on him. Not ready to throw a saddle on just yet, but nope. Better make sure. Better make sure this stays out of the horse pasture. No, you don't want Come any. On, Ryan. Don't want any trampling going on. 
no, this thing is target for that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's that's the pony. I'll show you the sheep from afar. They, I just fed them not that long. So ago. how many horses are, how many horses you got up in the mix there then? We got, let's see, we have, I think, seven right now Jeez. all together. So cool. Baby. Yeah, so crazy. How many peacocks? Hmm, peacocks, that's hard to say. There's like, they're just cruising all around here. Nice. There's honestly, I would say maybe 20 or so. And they just like live on the farm. They've basically been, they were here when we got here. So they just like, like my dad just feeds them. They came with the property basically. My dad just feeds them and they stick around. That is that's awesome. Like that's my dad's argument to the neighbors because they're super, super loud and it's a scream and like that definitely probably annoys our neighbors. But my dad's always like, well, like they're technically not really ours. They just came with the property. Like we're not, we're, they're just here. They just choose to stay here. So exactly. Yeah. Hey, Ryan, come here. Let's make sure he gets in. Ooh, what's game. up with those boards, dude? Is that some old? Oh, this is some OG. Max dude. and Gus lore. Let's check this out. Earth. DK Vertigo 128. That was one of my boards. I broke. Oh, Danny Cass. At the Nationals, like way back in the day, I decked out of the pipe. No way. The nose of this board. The only time, actually, that's not true anymore. I've broken a few boards, but for the longest time, that was the only time I'd ever broken a board. And I was like, I literally weighed like. 70 pounds <laughs> somehow crazy yeah, just, like, clean decking out of the five finals at nationals because i was like so hyped oh man you were you were probably just juiced up dude on red bull just sending <laughs> holy or apple we juice snowboard bench here i've been chilling doing a bunch of reading on this thing during quarantine oh yeah Not money OG Danny cast that the graphics like faded from the sun but is that one where you can like draw in these little word bubbles? And still got the sticker jobs cranking on there, oh, no yeah. problem. Oh, the M6 stickers, high cascade stickers. This is our old school Mount Bachelor team called the Grom Squad. Sick. You got the exit exit sticker? Yeah, dude. Shout out Exit Real World. Here's our uh, sheep chilling. They're kind of out of the picture right now. Just posted up, but we got llamas as well. Llamas, sheep, horses, peacocks, ducks, dogs. Dude, so yeah, if you're asking what I've been doing for quarantine, that's that's it. Just spending a shit ton of time around animals. <laughs> that's amazing. It's good. it's good for the sanity, for sure. It is. And I bet I, I guarantee one thing too. I bet your dad doesn't isn't bummed at all to have a few extra hands around the zone. Oh. Big time, yeah, yeah, dude. It's such a full. I literally have no idea because he still is working as a veterinarian, like through all this. And dude, it's just the amount of sheer time and energy that he's got to put into this place. It's like it blows my mind. It's insane. Yeah, so happy to happy to be here. Happy to help. Well, I re one more creature. Oh, this is Chompy. Oh, whoa! Giant tortoise who lives indoors. He's got a tracker on him right here because he escaped a couple times. <laughs> I Where, swear to God, he's, that's like a GPS tracker because he he digs a hole underneath our fence and escapes. <laughs> and how would you ever think that a big giant tortoise would be the one escaping? Dude, out of all these creatures, right? <laughs> it's the craziest thing. It's like some kind of something, and it's like DNA. It just wants when it gets warm out, it just wants to like go south, like. Get oh back my to god! Get back to the African tundra or something where it's supposed to be. <laughs> dude, he's head, he's heading east, dude. He's trying to get out of east and eastern Oregon dude, there. Exactly. Oh he got man! Crazy crack in it. He got hit by a truck one time escaping, like a giant hay baling machine, basically with these gnarly blades on it, and it got. Yeah, it broke its shell a little bit, and my dad had to do like a crazy surgery on it. It's a whole unreal story, but Whoa. he's back living fixed up. Dude, he's back surviving, dude. Take him outside, honestly. Dude, yeah. that's that is that's a dichot that that's just a little bit of a symbol for what we're going through right now, dude. We're gonna we we might take exactly. one to the shell, dude, but we're gonna keep going. Dude, honestly, <laughs> well put. He's just yeah. We all need to get a little tortoise wisdom right now. We just gotta slow down. Slow down. Yeah. 
I'm learn, I'm learning from all these creatures how to handle this. They're not bothered by it. You know what you do? You got to yeah. slow down. You got to center yourself, get inside your own shell, and figure out how to survive. Exactly, dude. We're just <laughs> hungering down. He does that every winter. He literally just hibernates in the winter. So amazing. Just, yeah, I just got to take that for him. We'll be full of energy and ready to go when this is all over. It's on. Well, I can't say thank you enough for joining my session today. It was huge, Gus. Like you're the man. Thanks for killing it all, all in the early part of the season and getting those Utah days. And I'm glad you're you've been with your fam for quarantine. Heck yeah, dude! Always good to chat with you, Sarge. Most definitely. We'll have a great rest of your day, and lo- we'll hopefully I'll catch you on the slope soon. Thanks, bro. Yeah, we'll be shredding in no time. All right, brother. Much love, yo. Peace.